What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, saints and ain'ts, and welcome to Lactic Acid. I'm your host, Dominique Smith, and today I have a certified baller, shot caller. She's telling people what to do to make them better, but also she's got that cat DNA in her DNA, balling out on the roads, running faster than your average Joe or Sh Sue, rather, and she is my guest today, none other than the legend that, oh God, you see, I'm so excited, I'm talking so fast, okay. the legend that is Miss Rosie Edwards, Miss Rosie, how you doing? Actually, no, Miss Rosie Edwards Santos, so let me put some respect on it, how are you doing? I don't know how to follow an introduction like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. man listen i'm good yeah how are you <laughs> you know no complaints i have a legend on the show so you know we are balling all thriller no filler that's how we roll on here so today's episode is going to be fun and you're gonna see why in just two shakes but before we even get to all that fun stuff i gotta ask you a question and i'm starting to temper these questions a little bit because a brother has to knock into his creativity so let's just say it's hot but to celebrate the heat of awesomeness they want to do and first of all heat safety make sure y'all hydrate i don't care if you're in dry heat or florida like me you better you better drink something um <laughs> like i said um so that's just my suggestion but anyway a bunch of people got together and say, you know what? This Rosie Edwards Santos sister, she is she is some different. She is awesome. She is legendary. She's doing great things. And we want to promote her awesomeness. So a couple companies got together. One of those companies for Food Network. They said, listen, we be we're usually creating custom meals. So we're going to do two things. We are going to send out our best chef to cook whatever gourmet meal she wants her favorite meal we're gonna cook it up the way she wants it whatever she wants doesn't matter it's all what she wants we're gonna put it on every menu we're affiliated with then they're gonna do something else for you they said you know bread is key to take you where you want to be yes bread bread been in the bible the lord said he the bread of life so we're rolling with some bread but there are some establishments that they have connected with, including the Cheesecake Factory, Outback, Texas Roadhouse, um, Olive Garden, Red Lobster with the Cheddar Bay Biscuits, different establishments known for their bread. You get a chance to be sponsored by one of them and get an endless supply of your favorite bread from your favorite restaurant. And the last thing that's going to be done for you, Brother Ben and Brother Jerry both got in on this meeting. Both of them had to come in on this meeting. And they want to create an ice cream for you. So two flavors of ice cream they need from you. They're going to combine it into one and they're going to sell it everywhere. So what we need, the gourmet meal, okay. the bread, and the ice cream. Gourmet meal, hands down. Any Brit watching will probably agree. Fish and chips. but. I'm with it. Fish and chips at home. I can't be doing this American fish and chips. It's never the same. <laughs> and I've tried many times and it's nothing like British fish and chips. So fish and chips is my gourmet meal. Um, maybe the curry sauce with the chips. That's that's another that's another world, but it's it's good. If you're over there, you gotta get the curry on the chips. I'm going after this. Shoot. Ooh, you nice. Get there, yeah. Um breadsticks. Olive Garden, because you get the salad with it. I like the I like the combo breadstick salad. Okay. Well, oh, you know you don't agree with that one, do you? I can tell. <laughs> it, it's your thing. It's your thing. Don't worry about me. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry Olive about Garden me. breadsticks and what was the last one? Ice cream, two flavors, Ben and Jerry. Ooh. Oh, I'd probably go something. I probably wouldn't have them together. We, I went out with my friend recently and I got these together and they thought it was the weirdest thing in the world and it didn't work. I did mango sorbet and cookie dough and it was awful. So I wouldn't do them together. <laughs> but I would do mango sorbet and some kind of chocolate, but probably eat them separate. Ooh, we got to talk about that first because <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I was, I was I, ooh, we have to talk about that. Okay. It tasted bad. It was awful. It was one. Of, it was one of these places where they make you a bar, and you can choose what the bar is. It's like imagine like a magnet, like a like a Hagen bars or something. So it was like 
the base you could choose and it was like vanilla or chocolate or mango so I went mango sorbet for the bar but then I had this big panic because there was this all these toppings and I couldn't decide what topping I wanted I had this major panic and I should have gone with something fruity obviously but then I thought oh cookie dough that'll work and then they put cookie dough on it and then raspberry sauce on top and it was the worst combination I've ever had. It was terrible. And what? my friends were just like, this is terrible. Don't do this. So we're going to have them separate, but they're the two flavors. <laughs> what were, what did they <laughs> Oh Lord have mercy. What was the look on their face when they when you asked to put cookie dough? I would have had to call somebody. But I would have called the police. Like, listen, something wrong. Yeah. Somebody yeah, they, <laughs> they were really confused. They were like, are you sure that's what you want? But I'll give you some context. It's like a hundred degrees in Scottsdale right now. That's so I was, I was very hot. I was very panicked. I needed something like to cool me down, but then I didn't know, didn't know where to go. Once I had the base, I didn't know how to mix it. And I just, yeah, disaster. When all this fails, just get vanilla, <laughs> sister. Come on. That's I should, it. That's I know, it. I should, yeah. yeah. You could have got some vanilla frozen yogurt. You could have, yeah. you could have cranked that out. Yeah. So Ben and Jerry's don't do that combo. I'll save them the work. I'll save them the experiment. Yeah. Well, here's what we said. Ben and Jerry's, if, if <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to help you out here. Ben and Jerry, if if you haven't like stopped listening <laughs> to this, what I would say is if there's somebody that you don't like, go ahead and give them that combo. That's uh you know That'll do it. Yeah. that's a combo that you give somebody who owes you some money or something like that. Um, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so okay, okay. That Lord have mercy. I wouldn't expect in that one. <laughs> <laughs> just get fish and chips and be done with it and then you go for the day yeah but we need to get to the fish and chips so i love fish and chips but i feel so guilty saying that because based on what you're telling me now i watch diners drivers and dives all the time and so i think so, there was a european a european there was a irish guy who lived in uh, like london or something and he made the fish and chips and i was like okay this is a little different different what is what what are what what is the grammatical what's what is what are real fish and chips like pretty much what are they like like not the american version not the 12.99 special with the extra yeah. fries that's burnt to a crisp like the authentic version it's going to be cod or haddock as the fish and then that's battered um and then it's the chips i think that it's not crispy it's kind of like a soft kind of batter it's not like a hard shell like it is mm. here that's i think that's where it goes wrong and then the fries are not french fries they're like thick chips it's like almost like potato wedges but not um but n without the skin so they're like thick um so yeah. this french business doesn't work yeah <laughs> People, people be putting them golden crinkles with that fish and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. Listen, I've, I've had some fish and chips. Shout out to Long John Silvers. Um, you know, sponsor the show if you're listening. <laughs> but you crack out that crust and you eat it and your gums are just just blood. Just bloody. Yeah, you wouldn't get that at home. No, nope. nice and soft, and then you you're good. Yeah, it's like they put <laughs> violence in the fish fish and chips community. Like a brother yep. just wants some fish, <laughs> and that's fried. Okay, wow. I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to run there to get these potatoes because it's almost like a fried mashed potato. Kind of, it's, yeah. Essentially, so yeah. And, and that's ooh, I got to do that. So is tartar sauce the way, or you do a little malt vinegar, or? Vinegar, yeah, vinegar, ketchup. That's your that's that's your go to. Ketchup with the chips, not the oh, not the fish. I was gonna say, what, what, I was gonna say, what are we doing? It's like that is different, different. No wonder she said we can't compare. But <laughs> so it's like the tartar sauce game, English, or is it just like we just decided to do that crap? Well, I don't know. I think maybe I think it kind of got made up here, but we can do tartar sauce. But I don't know if you'd have it with fish and chips at home. Home. Yeah. Wow. I got some other questions about some English restaurants. Okay. Um that we're gonna ask a little later. But so I named a few establishments for this bread. How how did we get on? Have you tried the Cheddar Bay biscuits at Red Lobster? Have you tried 
the big old loaf that looked like a football that comes out at Outback in, in Texas, long, not Texas, long, Lord have mercy, hook them horns, but the Longhorn Steakhouse, um, the rolls no. from Texas Rolled House. This um, might be where I'm going wrong. I think I just, I've only so, had, maybe I've only had the Olive Garden breadsticks because we used to go there all the time in college before races. It was like Olive Garden, you'd get the spaghetti, you'd get the breadsticks and salad. And I think I just kind of, and maybe I associate it with like, you're about to race, you're with all your teammates, it's a good time, but I could probably be swayed. I do like bread, so I could probably yeah. be swayed pretty okay. easy. But that make that make me feel better because we have okay, failed good. you. You were so we, we, you were I, so I wasn't <laughs> you know, I, I, I here's my disappointment. I low key think they may put them breadsticks in the microwave. <laughs> Cause <laughs> I didn't have like bread that resembled listen, some of that bread. If you hit it on top of your head, it will give you a concussion. But that's the one part of the bread. And then the other bread, it's like soft as a pill. I'm like, what are we? I, listen, I know microwave pizza because the crust be hard, soft, and then the middle of the pizza be cold. So I know when something is in the microwave. So uh-huh. that's just, all of garden don't come to me. I just didn't know. Maybe it's the one I went to that one time. Maybe it was a hurry or something like that. <laughs> but when they are fresh, I will say this. I'm not as big. Their salad is unique. I don't even know what kind of soup it is, but they have a soup. Okay. It's like dumplings and a bunch of other chicken and all this crap. Different with that bread. Different. Not the same and level. It's 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 it slaps. It's it slaps a little harder than your average whatever kind of soup that is i'm like listen i know y'all not real italian but listen that make me want to go to italy real quick like that is <laughs> i'm telling you I, and it, I'm, I'm in pain because i don't know what that soup is is it like gnocchi i think it may be gnocchi in that this could be a new show for you you could like blindfold your guests you could line up all the different bread and they have to identify which one goes with which restaurant which is the best but who paying for that the show sponsors just like the they show did. sponsors <laughs> see th- this is why she's so fast because she's smart and she's smarter than the people that she raised that's that's, that's what it is olive garden cheesecake factory um red lobster yeah, yeah. let's just all give them, of them. A- they're all in they're all in just say listen there is a lack of education in the bread community among athletes i'll use the british accent we'll use that make it work i'll be like i've never eaten in america before we'll do that I say, listen, I have a sister. She 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 need it. She need that. She need it. She's in dire need. It's hot. It don't mess with her brain cells. They don't burn her fish. It don't taste like nothing. Them yeah. chips that's supposed to be chips. They look like uh, steak fries that got messed up. They don't yeah. introduce tartar sauce and nobody eat it. Everything going wrong. Hook a sister up. She need the bread. She needs some bread. She's got she nothing need- else to eat in America. She's got nothing else. She's got nothing to look forward to when it comes to things. Yep. Nothing. It's hot. It done took her soul away. She needs encouragement. Encourage her and carb load it. Ain't nothing. Listen, a marathon and needs carbs. And it so is. listen, this is what we can do. If you want peak performance and you want to enhance the brand, send sister six loaves of different kinds of biscuits and bread. Now I will say this. <laughs> you can make the red lobster cheddar bay biscuits because they sell it they actually sell it yeah, um, do you get permission for red lobster i feel i feel you might <laughs> I, I need to call somebody who 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 brother Welcome. lobster or whoever uh yep. whoever is in it Papa lobster that's it Listen, you know, I, I ain't been in there in a hot minute because you know they stopped putting them little shrimp inside the Caesar salad. Um and so that kind of hurt my heart. And I never really, they do have some bomb tacos. Red or, I don't, I keep calling them like they, the first name is like Red or Lobster. But they have some great tacos. Uh, fish tacos or shrimp tacos. I don't even know, but them tacos slapped. Um, but those biscuits, I'm telling you, if America just and the world just united on them biscuits, we could solve everything. Absolutely. You know? I, People crime wouldn't be a thing because they be busy. They be too busy eating. Busy eating biscuits. Too yep. busy eating biscuits. Like let's. Mm, I'm telling you, everything. We don't have any oh, climate crisis. All right, just get some biscuits. Let's let's okay. just sit down and we can sit down and come to a compromise to save the world. That's that's what it is. 
I'm going to make it a mission. I'm going to send you some biscuits. I'm going to send right. you a box of Cheddar Bay biscuits when they go on sale because I don't like to pay things full price uh, that's not fried. Um, <laughs> but I got you. I'm going to send to you. When's your birthday? It's coming up August 20th. August 20th. You're going to get it. You're going to get straight to Arizona. If it don't melt before, you will have it. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Perfect. Uh, perfect. Praise the Lord. So Rosie is different than everybody because she's faster than the majority of people who are listening to this that run marathons. But you, interestingly enough, you're not just a marathon runner. You're a coach, longtime coach. Uh, you're a trainer. And then you're really fast. And so before we even get triple to threat. all that stuff, yeah, it's just, you're just a triple threat, triple crown, the GOAT. That's why we say all thriller, no filler, hashtag, the truth never expires. How did you get your start in running? Essentially, that's what I'm curious about. Yeah, I, I was, um, I played football at soccer, like, um, for many years. And honestly, I was just so bad at it. My mom <laughs> asked me if it was probably time to find another sport. And ooh, ooh, ooh. it definitely was. Um, so I just started running to try and get fit fitter so I could be like better on the pitch and didn't really work I was still so bad I just get put get <laughs> kept getting put in goals and I'm terrible as a goalie so I quickly like stopped doing that and then um transitioned into running yeah and I had a really good PE teacher um and he was really into like mountain running and fell running and he used to take us out after school on like Wednesdays and Fridays and we would um just run all around the valley where I grew up and I just um just loved it um just being outdoors and being where in the middle of the hills it was just I got the bug pretty quick yeah <laughs> did you ever think you would achieve the success and be where you are now I always I think I I started off with the shorter distances and I I always wanted to do the longer stuff um mm -hmm. but yeah I think I I always hoped that I could keep progressing through the years but um yeah, it's just something you just have to be kind of persistent with and stubborn with until it kind of pays off, I guess. <laughs> Growing up overseas, what was the trans transition like going to Indiana? Of all the things, you could have gone to Florida. Could have gone to gone, Florida. Could have gone to California. You could have been, you could have went to New York. Could have went to... You, but you went to Indiana. 49 different places. <laughs> yeah, so many different places. Different Could have went to Seattle, could have went to yeah. Boulder. But you yeah. went to the great state of Indiana, the Hoosier <laughs> State, to be a Butler Bulldog, yeah. which I have to say, you were in school when they almost won a national championship. I, my heart was so broken. So good. Oh, I was yeah. like, why didn't... Uh, oh. Yeah, Man, it was, I just it was incredible time to be there. But yeah, that was that was a tough tough loss that night. Um, but yeah, I think I I had offers from a few different schools, but the coach um at Butler, the assistant coach at the time, um, he's now head coach at UNM. He just um Darren Goss, and he came over to England, and we met him, and my mom met him, and um, he was just a really good guy and he really sold the program well and he made me feel like I was I, I it was a really good opportunity and that we would really be looked after um and I actually didn't even see the place I just packed up my bag me and a couple of other girls from England we just packed up a bag and moved there like uh, and they were doing their undergrad degree I was doing my master's so I was I was 20 and they were uh, like 17 I think at the time we just got on a plane to a place we'd never been and moved there for a few years and um Indy was really good to me or such good people um the Butler program was was really good and the team was amazing um I have a soft spot for Indy it wasn't a place I wanted to stay forever but the people I was with there they made it made it a lot of fun I loved my I loved my time there what was the transition like from well I just asked that but specifically Oh better yeah, yet. from England to the US. No, but better yet, what was like the biggest culture shock? Rather, that's the that's the one I want to ask. You know, the first thing I remember is that I felt like everything smelled like cinnamon, and everything had peanut butter in it. Like 
everything you bought in America was like with peanut butter and everything. I just remember this smell and just associating it with cinnamon for some reason. Um, everything was huge. I just remember the place being massive and I was always cold because the AC was always on full blast and we don't really have it at home. So I just remember being freezing, bombarded with peanut butter, things smelling like cinnamon and then like <laughs> going from blazing hot humidity outside to going inside and needing like a big puffer jacket are just so confusing it was all so big and so um bold and just like another world like because I was from a really small town so it was pretty pretty overwhelming but in a good way yeah what what and where were you that it was infested with cinnamon I you know, I I love Christmas. I love the holidays, but you know, you You're just like, hopped off the plane and it was fall. Like it smelled like a can, like a candle maybe, from home. It was just my first Target experience. First time you're in Target, maybe it was that. <laughs> that just, that's it right there. That'll do it. Every, I was like, just smells like cinnamon. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, when September turned into October, it it smelled like you. It's a cinnamon roll coming fresh yeah, out the oven. It does. Yeah. It's great, yeah. <laughs> oh man, the peanut butter thing is real. Peanut butter is like a cult here. Like anyway. it, it, everybody loves. I, listen, I'm a peanut brother brother myself, specifically Reese's peanut brother cup. Put some respect on it, but it's in everything. You want a Reese's? Got peanut butter in it. Got a nutter butter that has peanut butter in it. Uh, yeah, yeah, like it's crazy. But I mean, that is a adjustment essentially. What pretty much. I just said that you are a coach, you're a trainer. Where did that passion for helping people achieve their ultimate goals come from? Um, that's a really, uh, it's a really good way to look at it. Um, I think honestly, like as cheesy as it sounds, like running has given me so much, um, like the opportunity to come out here, all the friends I've made, like my family, my husband, like I've kind of met as a result of moving to America because of the opportunity running gave me to come out here. Um, if someone can enjoy it the way I do and the way I always have, it's, and it doesn't have to be running like that. This can come from like my personal training, just like movement. I think movement is such an, a special thing that is so accessible to everybody it doesn't have to be running just in any way it can just improve just quality of life so much I think making that accessible but more so approachable for people mm -hmm. people can be very overwhelmed with the idea of getting out there and starting and um it first started when I I graduated from Butler and I was working at a school for autism and I was working with kids um and became more of the I was a teacher but we noticed the kids were not focusing too well and they were struggling with their academics so we introduced a lot of exercise into the daily routine and we like got rid of all the chairs in the classroom and put them on exercise balls just to keep them active and mobile through the day and just seeing the change that activity made to their life and then transitioning into personal training and helping people um to move them to be to become healthier and improve health issues they'd had for like decades I always really enjoyed and then just seeing people accomplish things that they never thought they could, no matter what level it is, um, is really exciting for me. Like I'd love to have my own gym one day and make it more, um, just have people come in and make exercise less scary for people. I think that's that's what I love about it the most. Oh my gosh, the passion, the energy. I know. I, I just know. yeah, I just I know it sounds a bit over the top, but it's no, yeah, it's, I love it. It changed my life. It's it's great. <laughs> oh man that's that's amazing and then like everybody that i talked to speaks so highly of you like obviously we know laura thweet but you also run with some pretty cool runners like i i know you run with julia griffey and um yeah. people like that who is a legend let's just get don't she get it twisted she is a yep. certified baller um but what has it been like to just engage with the running community and how has it helped you in your journey um i think just being I think when you're you're new to it you have this misconception of what like elites are like and when you're starting to learn and it, when you're starting to race more and you're starting to improve or find your distance you always have it's like any sport you put people on a pedestal but in running when I moved to Boulder um from Indianapolis I started to realize that everybody's just we're all the same everyone's just 
welcoming. You very rarely come across you, the amount of people you've had on your show. You very rarely come across people and you're like, don't want to talk to them or they, like, <laughs> you know, they've, they've, they're up on themselves or whatever. But um, I've just been the people, the people in running are just genuinely like pretty down to earth and easy going and everyone I've been lucky that people always want to help each other out with training. Like it's always so much more fun to train with each other and to do workouts together and push each other because you always get more out of yourself when you're training with people. Um, Julie is an absolute legend. She's just moved down to um, Phoenix from Flagstaff. Um, and my friend Alice, um, who I'm staying with right now in Flagstaff, she introduced me to Julia. And those two have just been like, oh, this this is so fun. So it just it just makes it, We've got a little community in, in Scottsdale now. There's another girl called Jess and Julia, and we've run a lot together. And then Alice comes down sometimes. And um, yeah, it's, I think, just like going for a run with your mates and I've been starting your day off well. It's a good, I wouldn't get up at 5 a.m. to go for a coffee with someone, but I will to run with someone. <laughs> you better preach. I wouldn't do both. But listen, that's why you do go. <laughs> um, let's get off this track stuff because this is a special episode and um, we're, we're going to, <laughs> oh boy this is gonna be fun but i have to ask you before we get into that what are three things that people do not know about you three things i don't even know one thing people don't know about me um uh, well we might find out soon i think you don't have <laughs> to tell us that one so <laughs> so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna get to that one so you three might, other yeah, th- right. you might I'm tell gonna, people something we don't know because i have to no you're gonna tell but we have to have a uh i have a follow-up question about how did we get in doctrine in that so actually you don't go bump that number one tell tell the people what the animal that you love so much so dearly all right i love cats mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i'm a bit yeah, bit, I'm definitely a cat lady, bit crazy. We've got three cats. So, yeah, we, okay. not really on purpose. They kind of find us, but um, they yeah, do. We got, we got three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One of them's got a bit of a brain disorder. She wobbles a lot. So she's called Shakira because she dances. Oh my God. <laughs> it's not very so, PC. <laughs> yeah. Um, one that's... of them's called Ernie. Like, don't know why. And then the other one's mango. So yeah, three cats. That's something people might not know. I don't, I collect, I collect animals. Yeah. That is brutal. Y'all, y- bless that little cat's heart. Why would you go Shakira? She's so happy. Oh, she's great. Don't worry. She's happy. She just like wiggles all the Bobbles, time. Bobbles, wiggles. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, I feel like that could be three right there. I think, oh, yeah, I've got three Three, uh, my three kids. There we go. <laughs> okay. So, so where did the love for cats come from? I We had them growing up as kids. Um, okay. I just like them. They're like little companions. They don't take a lot of, they don't take a lot of work. They just kind of wander around the house and, and uh, yeah, just, you can talk to them. They don't talk back, but you can chat away and, they just, they don't require a lot of work because they run the house. <laughs> like, yeah, they do. They they own the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah them, 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 them cats have little attitudes. I, I watch some of them social media videos. I'm like, mm, we're gonna stick with a goldfish. No, can't. We're not doing that. Um, but Rosie and I have something in common. We have two loves. Rosie loves cats. I love fried chicken. That's been evident and obvious on the show. I think I have mentioned it that back in the day I used to make songs, just turn little modern day songs and just change the lyrics up to to fried chicken. So Rosie does the same. And so on this exclusive episode of Lactic Acid, I thought it would be fun if we had a sing along. All right. Um, this is no, Laura's fault. Laura told you this. This was this was a secret, but yeah. <laughs> Oh, it was a secret. So it is no, 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 not really, not really a secret. Yeah. Shout out to our our friend Laura Thweet, who we love so dearly, who was so awesome. Uh, Laura, thank you for telling us the secret. Uh, I think it was on the last episode she talked about it. So I don't. So tell me what kind of music you like. 
Mm, a little bit of everything. Um, but I find that they're usually more like R and B songs or like something with a really good beat. If that's what you need. You'd, so, and, and you get to the point where you forget the lyrics of the real songs. Like I sometimes it comes on the radio, like Dre, still Dre, and I'm just like, kitty kitty cat. It's the one and only C A T. Like I don't know the real words anymore. You know, where come from? And then every time we're in the car, my husband's like, "All right, make this one into a cat song." And I'm like, "Okay." And you just you don't even remember the real words anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna start. <laughs> that was a great introduction. So I'm yeah, gonna yeah, start... I gave it all away. Gave it all away. All right, so here we go. <laughs> we're going to do, um, and you can it could be as brief or as long as you want it to be. I'm going to pick some songs for you. You're going to pick some songs for me. If you do not know the song, just tell it, just like I'll say if I don't know it as well. And then we'll rotate, okay? So okay. let's go with the classic. Okay. Uh, Shorty Got Low, or Low by... Uh, low God, by... Um, by um... Shorty Had Them Apple Bottom Jeans. Oh, yeah, that one, yeah. All right, so, all right, so take it off. Cat uh, <laughs> like it had some really nice ears, boots with the fur. All the club was starting to purr. <laughs> but you don't have a lot of material. Cats don't do much, so yeah, you have some repeats. All right, I want to hit good chicken. Let's hit chicken. Give me a song. Oh, we're not doing the same song. Okay, um, let's do. Oh, uh. Now I'm gonna have brain freeze. Um, let's do. Oh, that's a good one. Let me start yeah, off. Uh, what was the song by Lil John and the East Side Boys? Yin Yang Twins. Yes. Uh, the window to the wall. I was gonna say that one. Okay, to the window, to the kitchen, to the kitchen. <laughs> Put some hot sauce on my chicken. Hey, so that's. That's my short one for that one. Plus some sharp claws and some whiskers. You can just hey. like fix them in. <laughs> oh, ski, 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 ski. Ah, <laughs> oh, uh, treats, 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 treats. You give them some cat treats. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Wow. We're just doing duos on here. Yeah. Um what's the just good don't one? fry the cats. Don't get it confused. No fried cats. We we don't fry cats. No, we, no, we, no, we, fry. Just we don't believe in animal cruelty. Well, that's so bad because we're talking about fried chicken. Uh, we don't believe in, in fine house pets. Let's let's just do that. Or uh, or cruelty of any animal with house pets. Um hmm, what's a good one? Do you know anything about Usher? Yeah, go on. Hit, hit me. Let it burn. All right. Uh Gonna burn for me to say this. I'm gonna take away your treats. I'm gonna put you in the litter, but it'll get stuck to your feet. Wow, that was really good. Yeah, it's that was that was legendary. That was really good. Oh man, I don't want that chicken to burn deep fried. You know, you know, gotta let it go. Go to peace. Oh man. Man, we're just cranking it up. All right, get, hit me with one. Hit me with one. I feel like I'm in the zone now. Um, let's do. You know, G Easy. That. No, we're not doing that one. It's like, That's a good one. It's a good rhythm one for cats. Um, uh, no. All right, so you hit it with the cat. Oh shit. <laughs> me hit it with the cat. That one. Yeah. So uh, the one I was thinking, the one I've done. Um, I used to. Oh crap! You can do like when they're in a certain situation. If like they walk in, like the cats. If you've seen them in a litter tray, they just like have no respect for the space around them. They're just like throwing it everywhere. They're just like That's... having fun. So you like make it rain. Like I make it rain. I make it rain on the cat. You know, just I <laughs> like that. I just, just to do. Just you know, situation. you know, ti's whatever you like. Oh yeah. So I can do that one. Do that yeah, one, I want your chicken 
Need your chicken long as you got me. We gon' fry more chicken. You want it? I buy it. Go get it. I fry. Tell them other establishments to be quiet. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, you. That was that's that's your go-to, isn't it? I haven't done it in like ten years. <laughs> Look at that. Bring it back. <laughs> Bring it back. Oh man, what is a good one? I feel like you can break out a nice Whitney Houston. I want to dance with somebody. Mm. or better yet what about oh no, screw that one no sorry Whitney um <laughs> Bruno Mars because I feel like a Bruno Mars um what about the lazy I would song scratch all the sofa for you. <laughs> <laughs> I would scratch the <laughs> I like that I like that oh my god we got to do an album Oh man, what is this? What is this? We'd probably sell like two copies. You'd buy one, I'd buy one. That'd be about it. Buy okay. one for your mom for Christmas. That's about it. Yeah. Buy one, get one free. Listen, I do Christmas chicken jingles too. Um, what is the song by Bruno Mars? You can do like the lazy song. Yeah. Uh, um, oh, wait, today mm -hmm. I don't feel like doing anything. <laughs> I just wanna lay in my bed. Lay in my cabin. <laughs> gonna fry some chicken of my own extra crispy with a bone today i don't feel like doing any Ooh, that's bad um, stop put some litter on it eat your treats and eat some chicken with it oh, <laughs> that, is good. that is that is good i stop. like Bring my whiskers get a fluffy tail put your paws in it like <laughs> Just, this is somebody sign run. us just let them run with it yeah whatever just, they've got we're just rolling i'm just gonna start singing you pick it up you know yeah. nothing on you who's that beautiful girls all oh over. yeah okay <laughs> okay <laughs> a beautiful food all over the world I could be tasting, but my time would be wasting. They got nothing on you, chicken. <laughs> I could be baking it instead. I'll be wasting it. Like you don't want baked chicken, you want fried chicken. Oh, I can say they might say fry and I might say bake, but we shouldn't worry about how it tastes because they got nothing on you. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That is. Uh what would yeah. be a nice oh what's the a eight nice mile one's good. you can make the eight mile one good like oh that's paws tough are sweaty. paws are sweaty tails fluffy claws are ready vomit on his sweater already fur balls but not spaghetti like <laughs> it's nervous but on the surface it scratches calm and ready to to drop a litter but it keeps on forgetting <laughs> How it got down, the whole litter goes so loud, it opens its mouth, and the meows don't come out. <laughs> the meows don't come out. There you go. And they could they could even eat the fried chicken, so you're good. Yeah. Snap back to reality. Oh, the ghost crap. Oh, God. You better lose yourself in the chicken. You want it. You want it. You better never let it go. You only get two pieces. Do not miss your chance to go. This opportunity comes from <laughs> I feel like we're thriving at this. They, so. we're, these aren't even songs. These are just like nice jingles. I think and it just makes everyone feel better. If you're in a place where it, it, it's quiet or like people are just concentrating and you bust out a cat lyric, people are just, makes everything better. Everyone's just happy and relaxed after that. <laughs> I used to do like Christmas jingles. Have yourself. A crispy piece of chicken. Piece of chicken. <laughs> Let your bucket be fried. <laughs> you should send that in like out. those Christmas cards that open and sing. You should send it to your family. They'll like that. Oh, but what would, we need like a good like Christmas song. Like what if we turn like this Christmas into like a cat cr chicken jingle? It's got to be like Mariah, hasn't it? That's the ultimate Christmas song. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There's just two things I need. An extra crispy piece of chicken 
and the cat under the tree. I just okay. want, want it for my own. Extra crispy with a bone. Meow's wishes come true. Ooh, I need to adjust that run. That was bad. Oh, that was man. Good. That was good. I like it. Yep. I feel like we have mastered this in such an elite way. Like, I hope people come away inspired by this to get a cat or invest in some fried chicken. How many people do you think do this, but don't, but just sing these songs in their head and not out loud? Because mine, probably, I probably accidentally sang it to Laura one time when Ernie had, his, <laughs> yeah. what happened was he had his, like, he had his, uh, like, you know, when they put an inject, they give the cats an injection or a bloodline, they shave a bit of their paw and it became boots with the fur. And then yes. I sang it. And she's like, she's like, where did this come from? Because he had his actual boots with the fur. And she's like, where's this come from? I was like, oh, I've got hundreds of cat songs. And then we'd be driving to like to run and something had come on and it, it'd turn into a cat song. She was like, you have a lot of these. I was like, oh, I have a lot of these. Yeah. But you just run out of material after a while because they don't do too much. They sleep, they eat, they have whiskers. That's about it. So. But still, but like most people, most people do songs in their heads. We're just encouraging the world to be vocal about it. I think. Yes, express your true feelings. Um, yeah. I mean, fried chicken only does a few things, but they made like. I'm trying to figure out what Taylor Swift song that I flip around to fried chicken. I flipped some T Pain songs. He had a song called "Buy You a Drink." I think I turned that in to "Buy You Some yeah. Chicken." I'm going to buy you some chicken. chicken. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to take it home with me. <laughs> I'm going to buy a new cat. And I'll take it home with me. It's going to scratch, shawty. <laughs> <the rats>. like... <laughs> <laughs> and then like instead of ooh, ooh, just start meowing. Yep. I love that. God, somebody, I feel, oh my gosh. I so feel like we could like be great jingle writers. I think so. Yeah. Hallmark cards, I think they're old news. If every card was about chicken or cats, everyone would buy them. Like, I don't know. What would be a good, if you had to do a cat fried chicken pickup line? Oof. Mm. Um. Man. We might need to work on this one. I feel like it's easier for a cat than chicken. Oh man! Well, cats just come and they just jump on you, and then you—they own you. So they probably don't even need to say anything. They just—they just jump on you, and then that's it. Job but done. Cats, but ha cats have like unique qualities. Like they you're pur you're purring me apart or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Oh man. It's like, are you from the South? Because you're just a two piece extra crispy or something. Nah, that's bad. I, I need to think about that one. <laughs> that's kind of hard. Yeah, well, this one, this one might take some work. This can be part two. Pick up part lines. Two. Oh man. Yeah. It'll be like Usher's Confession, the cat chicken version. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's just, but I feel like we listen to music and then it's just like, oh, bam. It does, yeah. It just it just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> like if you if you if you put on any music right now, anything, yeah, guarantee you, you find a way. Because I don't know why I probably should have wrote some songs down, but I feel like the material because you did some things that I didn't know that you could change the lyrics where cats are concerned. <laughs> change anything yeah it's like just I th and it doesn't really have to make sense it's probably better if it doesn't make sense and I think if you'd have written it down it would have been too rehearsed and it's not quite as fun no I just meant so but like what if you, like Drake's still here like me and all my cats are doing well doing well dog <laughs> sick of the kittens sick of the kittens Pass yeah. it up. get rid of kittens like just <laughs> <laughs> kitty 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 oh you know that song booty 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 rocking everywhere <laughs> you can have the cat dancing yeah kitty 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 <laughs> meow i found you oh but i mean gosh oh man 
I feel like I'm just so disappointed. I wish that I trademarked. I have to trademark some of this stuff. You have to trademark some of this stuff. Because I bet on the long run, you just roll them cats names roll out. It's quite good, like at the end of a run, if you're if you're like in the hurt locker and you've got like a couple more miles and you just want a distraction, um, you just find a song in your head and you can just like make it. And quite often I'll like get back to the car and be like, Oh god, I remember that one. And then I it's know. gone. And it's there it's, in the moment. Then it's gone. That that is so frustrating. Like the Christmas songs I wrote. I think I had chicken roasting on an open fire. Um, I don't know. Silver bells is chicken time in the city. You uh, should just make a competition, see who can write the best one and send it into you. And then you can like pull them out of a hat. You have to do it with me though. Get the audience involved. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. So here's right. what we'll do. It'll be on our new album. Um okay. I don't know what the album will be called. I don't know. A Bucket of Kittens. Then it's just kittens. Something about chicken and cats together. Ooh. Ooh. That's tough. Why do we pick like the most difficult subjects to say? We'll call it it Fur and Feathers. Fur and Feathers. Oh, girl, that's a restaurant. <laughs> that's a restaurant. Well, we're not cooking the cats. I'm just saying that, that could oh. be like a. Uh, um, yeah. But you know how they have like those cat cafes? Yes. And stuff like that. Think about it. Uh, you go pet a cat. When you get done, come and get yourself a two piece extra crispy. Perfect. Done. Burn, burn, feathers. burn feathers. What would like. Done the album cover be like it you be... holding a cat you holding a cat me having a piece of chicken eating it i don't think i don't think we should be on it i think we should be like behind That's... the scenes just be the chicken like sitting on the back of a cat or on its like head or something yeah with like his arms folded or something like yeah that. yeah like a cat mean mugging just like yeah with the chicken I'm... like sitting on it i'm so with that listen but i think we're very close to this being complete <laughs> We're so close. We just need a producer. I, I'll produce it. My dog going to sell. We might have to produce ourselves. I think we might struggle to get real back in. That's okay. We That's why we need sponsorships. We're going to get Red Lobster. And once they send them biscuits and stuff like that, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll we'll do them a custom song. Okay. Uh, done. I don't even know what the song will be, but we'll, we'll call it um, instead of Straight Out of Compton. Nah. I was going to say Straight Out of Compton. I would say like Straight Out straight of Straight Out of the Coop. Straight, Straight out, out the, the coop. coop. Straight Don't out the coops. Kins. Oh, never mind. Okay, so before I get canceled for singing some lyrics that are not good, because I cannot repeat the lyrics to that song. Pouring um, out the coop. That's what pour, we'll do. Pouring out the coop. I love that song. That's that yeah. song number one. Sitting in the morning sun, eating biscuits, petting cats. I don't know. What was the food scene like compared to back home? We already know the fish and chips suck. But just in general, like... Because it feels like your palate. Oh, oh boy. Okay, go ahead and testify, sister. I'm gonna give you the floor. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, just just, portions were just insane out here. Like when I first came out here, I was it blew my mind. One of my friends came back with me from America, and we went to a restaurant and he ordered two burgers because the burger at home wasn't big enough. (laughs) He was like, I need double the food. I mean, it's great as a marathon runner because you want loads of food, but that was the biggest thing. Yeah um the size um yeah i miss food at home i think i like very like traditional british meals but um yeah it's, it food's all right here yeah oh boy she she done crap see we definitely need to get well we just need to give her the bread forget all the other food because that's that's that, that's oh, that's yeah. go, that's going on the album she wouldn't feed that to her cat um yeah. oh my gosh the meow trilogies that's what it's going to be called but tell me so when you're not running, when you're not balancing out, what are you cooking? Like, what is what is Chef Rosie whipping up in the kitchen? Ooh, I like, um, I cook a lot of seafood. Like, love seafood, fish. Um, like, I, I like curry. I make curry a lot. Or, like, noodle dishes. Um, I like cooking. Um, it, it kind, it's quite kind of time intensive, so I'm more of a, like, 
throw everything in a pot and hope it tastes good kind of yes but it usually works out all right yeah how do you spend your time just mentally decompressing from the world of running and all that stuff outside of them cats um yeah, that's just like hanging out with friends and family and just uh um not nothing too fancy really i uh yeah i like uh, i like quiet time i definitely recharge on my own i enjoy being around small groups of people but i don't like a big group i like kind of small friendships and um not small friendships <laughs> small groups of friends <laughs> like so like spending time that that kind of stuff i enjoy that i'm with that that introvert state listen you know too much yeah. is, is too much we, we're not looking for a buffet not a we're just looking for a dribble not a downpour yeah. i am so exactly. with that um i would say it has to be a culture shock i'm coming from england to whatever the crap y'all doing with the phoenix <laughs> like i i don't even know in 120 degree heat, have you considered? I would do this as a project. Take a pan, take a cast iron skillet, and put a piece of raw chicken on it. Make sure you season. Everybody who's listening, season your food. Thank you. Or or an egg, and season your egg too, and see if it cooks. <laughs> it's like I bet it would. <laughs> yeah, it definitely would. You could definitely fry an egg down there. It's nuts. I can't. I cannot imagine running in that though. Well, I I've been up in Flagstaff staying with my friend Grayson and Alice for like the last four weeks because I I was training down there in June. June was okay, but you had to run at like 4 35 in the morning. So you gotta go very early, or if you're gonna go later, if you got a double or something, you go on the treadmill. Um, but I'll be yeah, I've been here for a while, which is a lot lot nicer and a lot cooler. Um I don't typically stay there for training in the heat of the summer because it's just insane. insane the rest of the year is great though like october through to like june is perfect you can't can't beat it so you just gotta if you can escape for a couple months yeah well we have talked about cats we have talked about foods and clearly the food in america needs prayer so we're gonna add that to the prayer list <laughs> All right. what is the number one thing that you would improve though i will say this outside of like the portion sizes because someone actually came on the show and they were like in Australia, our small is like a large overseas. And then <laughs> like Chick-fil-A could feed like the 5,000 or whatever yep. the case might be. So what would you, what's the number one thing you would improve? Over here, food-wise. Yeah. Um, I, f <laughs> I find like the food's overly like overly rich and overly seasoned and it kind of takes away the flavor of food sorry it just kind of takes away the flavor of food sometimes you just can't taste like veggies and stuff i feel like they oh. off quite can spoil it or like salads there's too much stuff on it like dressings and stuff just let the food taste like what it is i would like, say chef rosie just just preaching michelin chef rosie that's what we're gonna call you michelin, michelin chef rosie <laughs> the last food question Okay. Then we're gonna then we're gonna wrap this up with though. Nando's, is it worth the hype? Uh, this uh, this is bad. I because everyone in England will be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this, but I've never been to Nando's. So tell me about um, <laughs> how your training. So I, hear, is but I hear it's I hear it's incredible. I'll say that. Well, here's the thing. There was a nice little debate on Twitter with one of the sprinters that said it's not all that. Oh, all right. So I was like, I'm I'm gonna stay out of that. I can't afford that. That's that's upper level management. You know, that's above my pay grade. You know, that's a Dwight Schrute, Michael Scott debate, and I'm just sitting here like Jim, you know, on the floor, basically it's like that. Don't know yep. if you know about the Office, but love it, love the Office. Which one, the British or the American version? British one, way better. But I do like the American Ooh. one. I didn't like the British one, and I think because no. I didn't, I didn't get it. Did you watch the American one first though? Yeah. I think you need to yeah, I think you need to watch whichever one you watch first, you probably like best. Because he made a joke. Rick, Ricky uh was it Gervegas or Gervis? Hey. My bad, Ricky. Um <laughs> my bad dog. Don't don't roast. I was me. Wait. Sorry, Ricky. <laughs> uh, my bad, Rick. Uh but it's it's like He's not dead. He's not dead. It's... Oh, okay, then my bad, Rick. My bad dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that smoke. <laughs> Let me put some Moving on. Sorry, Ricky. Moving on. Yeah. Again, don't come, don't, don't listen to this. Just, just okay. keep scrolling, you know. Um, 
he told a joke and I was like, I don't get it. And then I just turned it off. And I was like, what what what, what is going on? Um, subtitles. That's what you need. Some subtitles. You show right. That's why she had a Michelin chef. That's why. Yep. How's the season going so far? How's the training going so far? Yeah, pretty good. I have just been building back. I had a bit of a setback um this spring, had a bit of an injury, um, a nerve issue. So I've been coming back from that, but things are going well, things are progressing and um just had four weeks at altitude so that's been really fun um we, and i'm going to be targeting like a marathon later this year so Ooh. some shorter races between now and then and then i'll do something at the end of this year or early next year last question for you are you having fun yes at this particular moment extremely fun and in life yes as well <laughs> why is i don't know what about running allows you to have that fun it's the people, definitely, yeah. Um, and just all the time, new people are coming into your life, like you meet and like everyone's a good egg. I would say a lot of good eggs in this sport. So, um, and it's just it's it's fun to always be pushing for something different. Like last year, looking at something that you're achieving now, and you just like being happy with improving on yourself I think that makes it fun and just always having a new challenge you can always have a new challenge and there's no like there's no peak that you can just keep getting after it so pretty much what she is saying if y'all are not um and I did turn that song into a chicken song too Marvin Gaye's and Tame and Tara ain't no mountain high enough <laughs> ain't no that Marvin, Marvin Gaye not yeah. Aretha Aretha copy it Aretha Franklin? Aretha didn't say that song. Whoa. I've just I've just got rid of any record deal prospect we ever had, haven't I? I got to protect you. Uh she's not from here. So she she don't know about Aretha. She's not from the United States. <laughs> she don't know about Sister Aretha. God bless <laughs> that. Uh, Tammy Tarot. Oh. That's yes. who sang it. Yes, uh... with Marvin Gaye. They were um singing partners. So a lot oh. of the songs that he do at you know, did a duet with um he did with Tammy Terrell. That's right. Ah, all right. Mm-hmm. Good. See, it's just education is key to take you where you want to be. It's, I know it. it's good now. You know, I learned about how nasty American food is, and she just learned who Sister Tammy Terrell was. Amazing. Look at this. Educate. But educate, educate, inspire, inform. That's what we do here on Lactic Acid. And listen, Sister Aretha, you put some respect on Sister Aretha. Listen, I'm not mad at it. You you know good music. R-E-S-P-C-T, you know what it means to me. You know what I'm yep. saying? That's that's how we roll on here. That's what I'm saying. So, you have survived the interrogation process. Now we've moved on to our final topic called Down the Home Stretch. I'm going to ask you a few rapid-fire questions. I want you to answer them to the best of your ability. Are you ready? All right. Ready. Let's go. All righty. If that oh, she's stretching. Listen. Ready. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So, if there was a food that you could live with for the rest of your life and a food that you can get rid of, what would they be? Mangoes. Couldn't live without mango. Get rid of peanut butter. <laughs> I'm trying to understand that after this conversation. Not a lot of people are gonna gonna dig with that. All right, who who's the funniest training partner that you run with or have ever run with? Oh, funniest! Oh, got a lot of funny friends. Um, I've been I've been running a lot with Alice. Right, recently we're up in Flagstaff, um, and she's very funny. We laugh a lot. So at this moment in time, probably Alice. Yeah. Okay. What's the best American restaurant that you visited? Olive Garden. Oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> Not really. Um, Mastro's. The fancy Ooh. steakhouse. Ooh. That look, that sound like I can't afford it. So I know that had to be good. Oh, so um, just, it's like a go for only a starter place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay well listen i'm not we're not there yet at lactic acid but um we, we're gonna get there what's the best cut of steak uh don't eat meat so i don't know moving on all righty what is the last t- television show that you binge watched selling sunset selling sunset okay okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm very i'm a very varied i've got a lot of variety going on yeah yeah i didn't expect that one but a lot of people watched that one yeah all right so let's just say they were going to make a movie about your life 
who are you picking to play your character? Ooh. I would I would want someone like um If I wanted someone like glamorous, which I'm not a glamorous person, but you know, just to look good on big screen, I would have Margot Robbie because we just saw her in Barbie and I love her. But yes. if I'm going to go for someone probably more like me, it would be someone ridiculous, probably like Rebel Wilson or someone like that. Ooh, I <laughs> so would like... love all oh, if they're doing a pitch perfect four. Can we get cast? I'm in it. I'm in it. Yeah, because I'm oh. not a very like. It's a very normal person, so I would need an actress who's a bit bit fatty, I would say. Why do you think you're not normal? No Brandon, singing no chicken and cat sauce don't don't help our cause. Have you not been here the last 30 minutes? Like this <laughs> I don't okay, so we say that doesn't make us normal. I think that's what makes us unique. Yeah, yes. Agree. Let's just say somebody was going to sing happy birthday to you. But you get to pick any artist that you want to sing the song. Who are you picking? Ooh. Uh, it's got to be Whitney. Whitney Houston. Mm. We like Whitney. We love yeah. Whitney. We, we love, love Whitney. Yeah. We love Whitney. I like that. Okay. Dream vacation spot. Mm. Somewhere I haven't been. Yes. Um, I want to go to Australia. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm down with it. Last movie that made you cry. Made me cry. I'm not really, oh, I'm not really a crier in at movies, but the last one that was quite emotional I watched was that one that's just come out. I forget the name of it about the, the child trafficking. What's it called? Oh, I don't know. I don't watch that kind of stuff. I don't really, it's, listen, I, Go ahead. It's just come out of the movies. I forget the name of it, but it was pretty dark, but it was quite educational. But like probably the last crying one, probably the notebook. <laughs> Listen, that there's some, there's like beaches, the notebook. Uh mine was Marley and me. Oh yeah. Uh, like why y'all make movies about dogs and dying? Yeah. Like, I'm like, come on now. Uh, <laughs> if you had to be a guest on any television show. What show would you be a guest on? Oh, um, you won't have heard this. It's a British show, Gavin and Stacey. It's really funny. Um, I've heard of Gavin and Stacey, my friend. I would be on that. We were just talking that. about it. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, that's that's a really funny show. Um, I want to be on like a comedy show. So it'd be, yeah. I would love to see you on SNL. Or we could do like carpool karaoke with James Corden. I love that. Too bad he's not. Yeah, he's done Just, now. Granted, television is kind of done right now, but all oh, cartoon, we would freak him out so much we because he'd be all about it. Because, um, oh my goodness, because a normal song would come on we Whitney just... Houston, <laughs> like yeah. Whitney Houston's I Always Love You, and then all of a sudden, and I. I Will always love food. <laughs> exactly. yep. And you sneak a cat something in there. Anytime. Uh, yep. Anytime. All right. Couple more questions. If you had to have dinner with anybody, anybody, who are you having dinner with? David Beckham. <laughs> David, listen, I'm mad at Brother Beckham. Ben didn't like Beckham. This, you know, I am mad at. Yep. yep. Since I was like seven, David Beckham's the guy. David. Be <laughs> I should think of someone better than that. I'm gonna think of like twelve other people after. So yeah. Oh man. Last song. Okay. What is your ultimate pump up song? Ultimate pump up song. Um. I'm kind of, I go through, I want something with a really good beat. So I would go with like a Drake or like Lil Wayne or something like that. Something that's going to like Machine Gun Kelly. That's a bit of a kick. 
Laura got me into him nightmare. What? And I was just about to say that Laura influenced you on that answer. Because I guess her... And it's like something like everyone's like, oh God. He's like, you should have liked him when you were like 16. <laughs> So when she when she first would really be yeah when she first came on the show there are very few times where i'm just like floored to where i can't talk and she hit me with mgk and i i didn't <laughs> i didn't know and laura we love you because you, i was i was judging hard because i was like machine gun because i just didn't expect it brother kelly Thank good you. you know yep. uh i i know only one song by him but uh yeah. wow we had a great great laugh she's it laura is a great laugh she's another one who on a run like one of the funniest people i know it's it's always a good time with her yeah uh she's legendary she is, she is. legendary the legend that is our friend sister laura Thute. all right two more questions when is it too early to start listening to christmas music never too early my january, girl she is january 1st whack it on i say I'm listen, it's Christmas in July, and her brother is just decking decking them halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 hashtag a lot. That's how we rocking on here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Thank you. See, I try to pace it. So what I do is um July, low key all out, September, the the first right. day of fall. First day of fall. We start mm-hmm. a little loose. We start with Whitney Houston's Joy to the World, a little bit of Boys to Men. Um, and we kind of keep it in that low key echelon. But listen, October hits, we take it up a little higher. Then we start listening to more. And then when November hit, listen, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Bean Crosby, Nat King, Brother Cole. It is all thriller, no filler. That's how we roll. And I'm just glad that someone else shares the love of Christmas with me. Definitely. I'm I'm just (laughs) my sister. All right. Last but not least, why does kindness matter to you? Um, it, it just, honestly, it just makes everything better. Like if you smiling and laughing just instantly lifts the mood of any room. So yeah, kindness is number one. I would always say, yeah. You have survived down the home stretch. You aced it. Listen, when you told me Christmas was your favorite time of year, listen, that's when you became a number one. Number one, number one, number one. Where can the people support your journey, Sister Rosie? And if they are looking to get into some training and they want to be coached by the best, because why not be coached by the best when it comes to training, where can they find you? Um, I'm on probably Instagram's the best. Um, Just Rosie Edwards with an extra E in the middle, because nothing else was available. And um, there's like a link on there to all like my coaching services, the personal training, the comes with a free cat and running plans. Yeah. I may have to sign up for that. You can keep the cat, but you know, listen, it's, it's definitely worth it. Rosie, appreciate you. Appreciate everybody listening. Love, peace and chicken grease until the next time. Peace. <laughs>